it's your girl Bernice Renee. Welcome back to my channel. I told y'all I was coming back and I'm being consistent. So today I'm here with really a life update video. So if you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. If you are returning, what's up? I missed you. Welcome back. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please. You know, that's how us YouTubers thrive. That's how we make our money. That's how, you know, everything just comes into place. So always subscribe. There's a little bell that you can also turn on so that every time that I do drop a video, you are notified personally with a notification to your phone. Isn't that lovely? So go ahead and turn the bell on, subscribe. Any information that I do share, if you like it, if you see value in it, just go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. So I'm gonna hop right into it. I did make a little list of things that I'm gonna go over. So if you look into my background, you see a box. It's another box up there. I am moving. I didn't even show y'all, you know, <laughs> this house. I moved into this house, well, we. So me and Benjamin moved into this house, August, 2020. And of course, 2021, August is coming up in 30 days. So I have 30 days to move. He already moved out, which was in March, cause that's also when we broke up. So yeah, we broke up um, March and he moved out. So I've been in this house by myself. Well, my best friend, she moved in with me. So it's been me and her ever since March. But it's five bedrooms, three baths, two car garage, the yard is phenomenal. Like, it's an okay house. It's dumb to rent now that I'm like moving out. I'm like, renting a house is just the dumbest thing that you could do. Renting an apartment, not so much. Renting a house, yes. Like, I don't recommend renting a house. So, you know, I mean, unless you just have to, you know, with him, the reason why we did it is because he has two kids and I have two kids. So it was like, all these kids, he needed a business room, a DJ room, I needed a business room. So that's why we did it. But, you know, things didn't go as planned. So it was like, dang, this is a lot of room for all this money, but we necessarily don't even need it. But anywho, so yes, I am moving. I don't know where I'm moving yet. It's gonna be a three bedroom, two bath apartment. I don't know if I'm gonna stay in Murfreesboro. I don't know if I'll be moving to Smyrna. I don't know yet, but I got 30 days to get it together or I'll be back at home with my mother for probably like 30 days until I can't get it together. So moving and just to elaborate on the whole breakup. Yeah, you know, nothing's wrong. I think dating in your 20s is just dumb. I ain't gonna lie. I don't recommend dating in your 20s because you're finding yourself you're trying to figure out what type of person that you want to be, what type of person that you want to grow into, where your career is going, what you want to do with your life. Like, and then it, this was also during the pandemic. So uh, that whole COVID stuff just switched the world. So it was like, you know, I don't know, you know, I just don't recommend dating in your twenties. And I, I'm not going to say not dating, date, but date multiple people. Don't sleep with multiple people. Date multiple people so you can see what you like and what you don't like. Now, I'm saying don't live with someone in your 20s. Don't live with the opposite sex in your 20s. It just doesn't work. If it's not your husband or if it's not someone that you are going to be long term with. And he needs to be the one that is clearing that path for long term. Not you ladies. Don't be digging in your secret stash, in your secret wallet, in your secret whatever to do something for a guy. Like, I don't recommend it. Don't do it. Do not do it. If you are stable, if you got things set up for yourself, your mama taught you well, you know, you got X, Y, Z set up. And I'm just like, if you know what you're doing with your life and you got it set up, do not bring someone else in thinking that, Oh, I can share what I've learned or my stability with someone because everybody was not raised the same. Everybody was not taught the same. Some people don't even know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you got it together, you keep it together. If they don't have it together, I'm sorry, they just don't have it together. They need to get it together before y'all can come together. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, I'm not bashing anyone or not even specifically talking about Benjamin, but I just don't recommend cohabitation with the opposite sex during your 20s. Wait till someone that, you know, that's like, hey girl, I'm gonna marry you. You're everything I wanted. 
you know, everything I need and he's going to lead the way. He's going to get the house or, you know, y'all will get the house or whatever the case may be. But yeah, so we just broke up, you know, and, you know, I just don't know what to really say, you know. He had his own issues and still does and being married at a young age is just, I don't recommend that either. So if <laughs> you're thinking about it, don't do that. Like that's gotta be the dumbest thing that you can do, especially if it's not the woman that or man that you wanna be with. Like it does not register with me why you would get married at 20, 19, you know, unless you're really actually, this is the person for you. But outside of that, don't do it because it really, brings in a lot of trauma a lot of issues um it sets the the tone for that person so it's like i feel like i couldn't even be a girlfriend i feel like i was trying to be a wife and i don't even want to be a wife yet you know what i'm saying like dang bro we're dating <laughs> you know like we are boyfriend and girlfriend we're not there yet so the expectations because of previous relationships was way too high for him and you know i'm somewhere like down here and i'm like i ain't there yet bro like you ain't put a ring on this so i can't do xyz for you because that's just not in the description of being a girlfriend and so it's just really just you know honestly he should have gotten a divorce and then he should have been by himself for two to three four five years then you know want to get serious with someone and i even i take my accountability for also putting that pressure there and you know wanting to move forward so it's not just solely him but you know i don't regret anything you know it's all a lesson and lessons are great you know they help you grow they help you become smarter they help you become wiser so overall you know it's what march it's july it's gonna be July in a couple days. Like, um, I'm definitely healed from any past drama, trauma, any past whatever that we went through. Uh, I definitely know that I'm more mature. Um, also for myself again, I'm, you know, I'm getting back to finding me, my self confidence, my self esteem, just all those things like self love that you lose when you're in a relationship because you're trying to make sure that the other person sees you just in this beautiful light, and they just. They think that you're the best and you're trying to prove to them that like, hey, me, like I'm I'm the one. So like I'm out of that stage. Like if you don't see that I'm it and I'm the one, then you just don't see it. Somebody else will and somebody else does. You get what I'm saying? So I'm back. I'm getting back to me. I, I, I love it. I definitely want to be in my own environment. Living with my best friend has been cool, but you know, she has two kids. I have two kids. And it's just, you know, it'll be a lot going on sometimes. So I'm really, 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 really excited to be moving back into my own environment before I mo moved into this house. I was in my own apartment. And I'm ready to just get back into my own environment and just do my thing again and get back on my feet and just get the groove in and become that, that fly girl that I once was. I mean, I've been fly and I'm still fly, but... You know, when you are on your shit and you're doing your thing, you can kind of like talk that shit and you can kind of like, you know, you can just, it comes with it. You know, when you know that you're in a spot where it's like, eh, you don't really be wanting to speak up and I'm not faking until I make it. That basically, you know what I'm saying? I talk my shit when I know that I can, when, I, when I'm there. So, anywho, so when the house is empty, I will do a walkthrough so y'all can see how big it was and how spacious it was. And it's a really cute house. I mean, there were really some flaws with it because it's a rental property. And this is a college neighborhood too. I mean, there are some homeowners here and there, but we're literally walking distance to the college and there's college apartments before you even come into the neighborhood. So, you know, you could tell that they just band-aid some stuff up, get these people in, five five students in each room, and then the semesters go by. So, you know, you could definitely tell it's a rental property, but I'll do a walkthrough so y'all can see how we was living. And it was cute. I decorated my beauty. I had my own beauty room, so I was doing lashes, you know, facial, skincare, um, waxing in, like, a room. Like, it was like a suite. So that this wall is black. That's why this wall is black. It really was some ugly, or is that color? Yeah. 
I'll show y'all how it looks. And then, of course, when I <laughs> finally have an approval on my new spot, we'll do a tour of it while it's empty. And then I won't show y'all again until it's fully decorated because I'm to the point of my life now. Like, before I moved here, my other apartment, it was decorated. It wasn't decorated to the, the degree that I wanted it to be. You know, I, I only had, like, few a few decorations so this apartment will definitely be decorated to a t is going to be exactly how i want it i'm gonna make it feel like home because honestly my my plan is to make this last apartment that i'm getting when i move out of this house my last apartment i'll be in that apartment for maybe two or three years i'm 27 now so by 30 i am for sure going to have a house so i'll go through the house process probably by 29 it'll be my 30th presence of myself so I got two to three years to kind of really step my game up, get things going for myself. Because it'll be the last time I'm renting. Like, I don't, renting an apartment is cool if it's an affordable apartment, you know. But when you get into the 13s and the 1400s, an apartment is like you are wasting so much money. And y'all, this house is 1700. 1725. So when you get up in there, it's like, that's ridiculous. Cause my mama has a four bedroom house, two car garage, you know, her, I, my house is bigger, but it's rental than her house that she owns. But of course she pays like 1100 in rent or excuse me, mortgage, you know, obviously because she owns it. So that's why I'm saying renting is very dumb. Cause she has a house, probably one bedroom less than this house. And she's paying 1100 and she's paying to own it on top of that so yeah i'm gonna be renting again after this last apartment i'm gonna do what i gotta do to make sure that i get me a house and i had already went through the first time home buyers course during covid um it was virtual uh, clearly but i got the big book and i got the certificate or whatever which would help me get like grants or whatever to be able to buy a home so I really just would have to get that renewed, I think, or I might have to take the class again, whatever. I don't know, it was $50. So I'll do it again and make sure I get back on my stuff with that. Okay, and secondly, I have wonderful, wonderful news to tell y'all. So if you're on my Instagram or my Facebook, then you already know, but my YouTube doesn't know. So I'm gonna show y'all my belly. My baby belly yes i am having a baby i'm having a little boy <laughs> i'm having a little boy i am today 23 weeks 23 weeks i am doing october yes it's a little benjamin <laughs> and we're gonna have to fight about the name because he wants to do benjamin jr the third because y'all know he's junior and he doesn't have any other options that he wants to give. He's just really stuck on that. And, you know, Barry came and she was a girl, but I've always wanted boys. So I didn't have names in mind because, you know, I didn't know who the father was going to be. But I do want to still be creative and kind of let him have his own name. And But we'll see, you know. I don't know. We'll see. But, yes, I have y'all. I'm fat. I'm heavy. <laughs> I'm good and heavy and I'm excited. I'm happy. No complaints. You know, everything happens for a reason and you know, it just, it is what it is. But yes, I am having a baby. So shout out to all the, the people that are, are watching that are not fans, but the people that are watching are fans. Yay. Congratulations. Last thing is business. So I do still operate Beast Beauty Bar. And so I'm moving into an apartment. And the last apartment that I had, I started Lash Extensions in that apartment. And the dining area where, you know, obviously the table was supposed to be where we eat dinner, I sacrificed that to make that like the lash area. But since I've been in this house and I had a whole room, I used the master bedroom as the, the spa suite you know i've expanded so i've actually gotten everything that i needed to be able to wax so i have my wax pot i got hard wax soft wax sticks 
strips, um, you know, the all the aftercare, before care. And then I got a steamer for facials. I got all the skincare products to be able to do facials, back facials. Like I'm literally a full service spa now and not just lashes because I'm an esthetician. So, you know, I really expanded the business. So I do everything. I do waxing, I do lash extensions, and I do skincare services, chemical peels. Um, the only thing that I haven't gotten yet is Dermaplane. Um, you have to get a certificate and that's literally bookmarked in my phone to do. And um, that's probably like next on my my list to do, Dermaplane, which is like a little scalpel and that's where you, you literally can shave off the first layer of dead skin and it's like magic. So that's my next thing. But after that, I will literally have everything and I'm a full service spa. So the, in the apartment, I'm like, man, I got way too much stuff. And it's just like to be able to set it up in my in my apartment without actually having an extra room because I'm only getting three bedrooms, the boys, the girls and me. So I have been looking for office space and I actually I'm actually going to tomorrow at two to look at a couple office spaces. And I'm excited. I don't want to do a suite like Salon by suite, whatever JC Suites or my salon suite because i wanted to kind of i want to be able to personalize like i'm very big on like wanting to kind of do things myself i don't want to pay somebody else to get richer you know what i'm saying i'm clearly i'm working on my own success so it's like go getting into those places somebody like myself done bought a building made 10 rooms and now they're renting out the rooms to estheticians cosmetologists and whatever which, you know, obviously I want to do that too. So I, I'm not saying I want to support anyone else's business, but I'll leave that to people who don't have the, what the, mm, or the, or want to even have, you know, the responsibility of doing that. I want to be able to get something that's completely empty and like jazz it up. So I'm looking at office spaces tomorrow. It's like five of them that are open and they're fairly cheap a month, which is, what I'm looking for, but I need to make sure that they pass the tenancy requirements, which the main thing is having a bathroom in the office. And then also somehow I need to have a sink in the actual room itself. So for example, this room, this would need to be the bathroom. And then I will also need to have a sink that has hot and cold water in this room as well. Those are the main things that is the hardest things to make sure that a building a space has because even in my room i'm technically not legal because i don't have an operating sink in the room i do have the bathroom but i don't have the extra sink and if you have a residential shop you also have a, also have to have an entryway that that's not the front door or the back door it has to be it, i would literally need to have a door right on that you know to come directly into that room they shouldn't be able to come through the front door and come through so you know, I done my research, y'all do yours. So, but I am going to look tomorrow. So we'll see how that turns out. So hopefully I'm able to find a spot. I'm looking tomorrow so I can have my new apartment and so that I can have a freaking suite and all the stuff that I have in that room, I can have at the suite, at the office and I can run my business literally like I've always wanted to. So it'll be great. Hopefully everything comes, comes into play like it needs to, or they'll let me, I don't know, bring in a contractor or something, someone so they, they can do what I need to do so that it passes the state inspection. Secondly, y'all know I have 324 store. 324 is my birthday. That's also when I launched my retail store in 2017, 324, And I started by accepting donations from people around where I live, generally used clothes and stuff like that. I would wash them and then I would resell them on Poshmark and that's how I started. And then once I, you know, got profit, I made my first purchase on actual apparel. It was these hats with these pom-poms. Let me see if I have one. Oh, this was my first product that I bought y'all. Oh, here we go. I bought a whole bunch of different colors. These I brought pink, there was a light pink. This one, no, it might've just been these three three colors but these are my first product that i ever bought like for my store 
pass. And <laughs> oh, yeah, so, and that was me starting one of them. Like I said, I got used clothing donations from people. Like it was kids clothing, it was adult clothing, it was whatever, it was men's clothing. It's, it's stuff that people didn't want when they did spring cleaning. And I literally washed it and then resold it on Poshmark. And if you don't know what Poshmark is, it's like a let go, a Macari, or offer up type of platform. Yeah. And then once I got enough money, I started buying actual products. And so now, of course, during COVID, like I really took my store up like 10 notches. So y'all know I was working at T-Mobile, the call center. I started there in 2017, which I'm sure that's y'all been knew that. But I was working at T-Mobile. And it was a good paying job. It was just very stressful. So I'm literally using paying my bills and then any extra money, I'm literally investing in 324 store. So when COVID hit, I went ham. I bought the first thing I bought wholesale or through a vendor was lashes, 25 millimeter lashes, which I have still, but those are for Beast Beauty Bar, which I didn't want to mix the two, so I was trying to, I bought lashes, and I'm like, I'll sell them on the store, but I'm like, no, because Beast Beauty Bar, that could be the retail portion of Beast Beauty Bar. I can get lashes, I can get lip gloss, because I can have cosmetics with clearly on the spa. So I bought lashes first, and then the next thing, I was buying purses. Y'all see all my vendor videos? Purses, I mean, AirPods. PlayStation 4 controllers, like I went ham. And these are all vendors that, you know, we just found off Alibaba. We had to be the first people to test it, you know, so we was. So my store went kind of crazy. I didn't have a niche when COVID was 20, when 2020, when we were doing this, I was just getting stuff and just selling it, just making money, just getting stuff, selling it, testing products. And so now the store has been closed probably going on six months now and because I'm I'm niching down I want my store to be a specific type of store I want to have specific type of products um I do want to be a general store though so I want to have quite a bit of things like I want to be able to sell hats I want to be able to sell clothes purses sandals so it's not going to be just like oh I only sell one thing it's going to be a store of just goods, but the quality and the product that I'm selling, I'm niching down. So it's only gonna be certain certain things. So the store is closed, it's been closed for a while now, but it is my duty to have my store back up and running before 2022. And I'm gonna go ham. Even this, this, this onesie is something that I bought. Body, For example, this bodysuit is um, something that I bought from Alibaba from a vendor. Yeah, I mean, I like it. It's it fits. It's so large. I have a medium in the same thing, but you know, I need stuff to fit this belly because, honey, when I tell y'all, if y'all look at my birthday video in March, which I would have only been like going on a month and a half pregnant then, I was little. I mean, I was small. Like from being stressed out in and out relationship and all that stuff, like I was extremely small. But now, y'all, I'm just like, oh, my God, what the freak? Yeah, but it fits me. I like to wear stuff that is not too tight, especially not too tight around the belly because it would be uncomfortable as crap. So these bodysuits actually come in handy. And I have a whole bunch more from when the store was open. The, um, you know, the kind of knockoff designer ones is like the Chanel with the C's and the Louis Vuitton symbols without the LV on it. I got all of them. So that's what I'll be rocking around the house. But I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm cute. My hair is growing, as y'all can see. It's so much hair. Taking the prenatals. It's just enhancing everything. My fingernails. Like, I don't even want to go get my nails done. Because, you know, they always like to touch your shit. I like the, I like the natural growth. So, but also, I did quit T-Mobile during COVID. So August 2020, I stopped working at T-Mobile. And mainly because working from home, you know, they closed the site, everyone, everything was shut down. So everybody was working from home. It was so stressful, y'all. I cannot explain to y'all how stressful it was. I was literally having breakdowns because, you know, we were in go mode. Get up, 
get your kids ready, go, drop them off, go to work. And it was such a major shift and not like a learning curve from doing that to literally waking up, going downstairs, hopping on the computer and then being in your house all day. And I was working 12 hour shifts because y'all know my shift was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, eight to eight. So I'm in my house on the weekends, eight to eight, taking calls. And then of course, this was a crucial moment in time. So phone service and people having access to their phones and people being on their phones all day during COVID, it was crazy. Like our call volume was stupid crazy. I was having breakdowns and meltdowns. I was crying. I was taking a walk on every break because you have to have balance working from home. And then your kids are home too because schools was closed. Y'all, it was so stressful. I mean, the job was stressful even going to the site because, you know, just a call center life is it's just different type of workload. You know what I'm saying? That beep, beep. And then when you're talking to people about finances and paying their bill and then honestly when you're talking about something as serious as a phone everybody is attached to their phone like it's glued to their face their hand like so you can't even play with people when you're talking about their phone and people don't play with you when they call in about their phone bill they phone not working they phone lost stolen or whatever people are not playing with you when it comes to their phone so the job was not easy like paid well many perks going to memphis flat screen TVs, $50 an hour. Like I'm telling you, they'll give you whatever you want in that job, but it's not easy, you know? And honestly, once I quit, I was like, oh my gosh. It was like weight lifted off of my shoulders, y'all. I couldn't express enough, like how, <laughs> how peace, at peace I was. Like I had so much peace and I just felt so bad for like my other friends that I had met. And it was still working there. And it looked like, you know, I mean, I was doing good because I took off with my store. I mean, I'm making sales, 324. I'm making like $1,000 in, in a week in, like Friday to Saturday, $1,000 just selling stuff. Meeting people, it was crazy. Like I had a crazy, 2020 was a good year, but it was so, it wasn't planned. So that's why I didn't, it didn't stay consistent because I didn't have a business plan. I didn't get anything organized. I was literally just going with the flow and just doing what I needed to do. So that's why it's currently closed because I'm going to get back in that momentum, but it's going to be the right way. I'm not going to be hand-in-hand -hand meeting people. It'll be all online orders and stuff. But yeah, I left T-Mobile and honestly, I don't regret leaving. You know, I just working, you know, I think everything comes into your life for a little season, a little reason, and that job was, it did what it needed to do in my life. It taught me the lessons that I needed to be taught. It made me the money that I needed to be made. You know, I, I, I feel like it did what it needed to do. I don't wanna go back, I ain't gonna lie. Honestly, I don't wanna work a job at all. Um, now that I've, you know, worked on my own, and I've actually not had a job since then, so it's one of the year that I haven't had, had a job. I haven't, I've been working for myself, the beauty bar, 324 store. Like I've literally been doing it on my own. So I know that I can do it on my own. And it's really just being consistent and making sure that everything is, you know, into a plan and not just off the fly. Cause off the fly does not work. I mean, it may work for some people, but I've done it off the fly. and. It worked, but it worked temporarily because my momentum went down and my personal life got mixed in and it was hard to. So everything now is definitely going to be. But I do have a job. I'll either start this week or something. And this is just really to keep a steady income. Like I do recommend keeping a job so that. You have a consistent income for just just period you know you do you do want something that i that you know for sure that you're always going to get paid and so i do want and it's actually a job that i love is in retail you know it's not something that i don't want to do i'm not working fast food i don't want to do that i'm not working a call center where it's taking up most of my days and none of that it's something really easy i'm going there boom and i'm getting my check and then that's either going to be saved or that's going to be what pays my bills or that's what's going to use to invest. And then I'm going to still have B's Beauty Bar and I'm going to still 
work on 324 store so at this moment here that'll be three incomes so i'll be working to get five before the end of the year for sure and hopefully you guys are listening to me when i say subscribe because that means youtube will be four and then my social media i know you can make money off instagram so that's definitely one that is going to excuse me that's definitely the next one getting that consistently and um you know becoming an influencer and doing things the right way with that yeah and then if you didn't know just this past saturday i had my first vendor pop-up shop i did it at my house because my yard is phenomenal it's big so i had five vendors um i had my truck that i thought that i no longer have he let me use my own truck for a day but we made funnel cakes i gave away free hot dogs i had a yard sale because clearly i'm moving so all the stuff that i didn't want i put out for sale of all of 324 stores old inventory i put out to be sold at a cheap price and then i had a vendor that she made banana pudding peach cobbler it was so fine there was a woman and her son that did kids jewelry which i did buy i brought i brought something from every vendor but she had kids jewelry there was one that had the kids designer knockoff designer like balenciaga and moschino outfits for like little kids like 3t 4t and she gave me an outfit as well for my boy there was a girl that made crafts out of resin I packed everything up, y'all. Like I'm trying to get them out. Yes. And I have I bought an ashtray from her and it had high maintenance in it and it was pink with glitter. It's fine. Cause you know, once I drop my load, I'ma have to get back to my Mary Jijana. But on a lower scale and only when necessary. But you know, I do feel like having that is necessary because there's some things in life that you kind of overthink and you be like, you shouldn't even care about, but once you get you one good hit, two good hits, you don't even think about it no more. It ain't even an important factor. You're relaxed, you're calm. And I really think that's why it's illegal because it really give people a, a keen sense of mind. Like when you, when used correctly, I'm not saying people that be high all day and smoking all the time and doing like when you're having a moment of stress and anxiety, paranoia, whatever the case may be, smoking you a little hmm and taking a, some deep breaths does help. So yeah, it was an ashtray, but it's so cute. I have to show y'all. Yeah, but it went good. I mean, me and my kids, we passed out over 150 flyers to neighbors. We put it in these groups on Facebook, like Murfreesboro Yard Sale, online yard sale. So people who actually specifically look for yard sales on the weekend, they pulled up. Of course, you had supporters of the vendors pull up. I had my neighbors walking down the street pulling up, just come. One guy was like, I just cut my grass. I just come to get a hot dog. I'm like, hey, I ain't even tripping. You can have you a couple. My son was in charge of making fun of page. He did a really good job. He's 11. So I paid him $7.25 an hour. So that was good. Barry was in charge of the drinks. She sold the Gatorade and the water for a dollar and I paid her, I think I paid her $12. Cause she be, she be blowing her money. She got it and she went to Dunkin' Donuts the next day to buy some wake up wraps. So I don't even know if she even has money left <laughs> and it's only been two days. So it was amazing. I made money, you know, I think I made like 200 something dollars. It was great. Like, and honestly, if, if you can make 200 at least, a hundred a dollars a day you're good as an entrepreneur but if you can make at least 274 you're doing phenomenal so the fact that i was in twos just off that and it wasn't even a lot of work because i got up saturday morning early i put everything out and i made a video of it so i had already had my promotional video for the day and i just scooted everything back in the garage as i set it up my kids had a sports game so we went to their sports game and it didn't start till three because i didn't want to be out not with his belly, not at 12, not at one, not at two. So we started at three to six and I just pulled everything back out of the garage cause I had already had it set up and I was through, I was good. The only thing I needed help was setting up the tent and Benjamin came that morning and he helped me put the tent up and that was it. And then me and my son, we practiced funnel cakes 
for like two hours before we started so it was all good it was easy and yeah so my vendor shop was amazing i'll do it again but of course it'll probably have to be somewhere where i, I paid to rent out where it's more high traffic area for like pub people driving by and they can stop because my neighborhood is not really a neighborhood that you're like driving by you're like oh yeah so we kind of like ducked off so if you're not in this environment and on the main street i did have a whole bunch of signs so if you was looking on the main street you would come in but outside of that it's not it wasn't in an area where it's like if everybody's driving and they're seeing oh all these tents and stuff so the next time i'll do it where it's like you know head turner type of thing so yes that is my update video for you guys i hope you enjoyed it so it was five key points i'm moving i'm pregnant i am single <laughs> um my businesses are still up and running i'm still big business b young woman i'm still rocking with the business and I had to show y'all, I had to tell y'all about my vendor shop. So, yes, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I don't know what video will be next. Um, maybe a question and answer. So, follow my Instagram at Bernicia period Renee. Because I'm going to do um, the little poll and have people ask me questions. And then I'll do an updated Q&A video. Because the last one I did was like 2020. Yeah. So I'll do another one because this was the update video, which I did one in 2020 as well. So we'll do another Q&A the next video. So yes, follow my Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Congratulations to me. If y'all didn't know, tell me congratulations. And yes, thank you guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs>